Hey guys, welcome back. This is Dan. You're watching I Allegedly. And I've got a good one for you today. Sorry the video's late today. I filmed this morning, had some amazing content, and then realized the mics weren't working, and we had a bunch of silence. So uh, before I get into it, please take a second. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. And uh, uh, don't forget to join the email list too. But as I was filming the last video, a couple things came out. Westpac Bank in Australia. Westpac Bank in Australia is going to limit the amount of withdrawals to $1,000 a day. If you guys don't think that this is not going to come here, you guys are kidding yourselves. You're going to see these banks do things to completely control the amount of cash you can take in and take out of the bank. Uh, uh, Elupolito sent me the notice from the UK banks where you're, they're limiting the amount of cash. I'm sorry, this, I'm on the bike path. I don't want to get killed. Um, amount of cash that you can take out. And he sent me a copy of the bank form. Now, here's the thing about this. This is the form. If you need cash out of the bank and they're considering how much cash you're going to take out, they're going to have you um, fill this form out and let you know if it's okay or not. This is ridiculous, guys. It's nobody's business. So many banks right now are limiting the amount of cash. I'm having... So many people write me from around the country right now that are saying, I can't get money out of my bank. I asked for $2,000. One person went in for $10,000 to purchase a car, and they were like, uh, we don't have that kind of cash in the bank. You have to schedule an appointment for that for next week. Now, what do you need the money for? It, it, it's ridiculous. You're going to see this happen more and more often. But one thing I want to talk to you guys about that was crazy was as I was filming, a young man walks by working out, it's like, hey, Dan, Dan, I want to tell you a story. Whips out his phone and opens up his Binance app. And that's the cryptocurrency exchange. And showed me how he had $10,000 in his account. And he couldn't get the money out of his Binance account. And that they are completely limiting withdrawals right now. It is absolutely insane. So I'm going to bring Francisco on here. Francisco, thanks for coming back twice yes. today. I mean, uh Again, what a cool place to live, okay? Oh, yeah, I love Down, Newport yeah, Beach. Is, is it fantastic? It's amazing. But uh, um, it was it was crazy because uh, we filmed this great segment. I was with the Economic Ninja and Doug. We were filming some stuff for uh, the foreclosure course. And uh, I was like, man, I got the greatest video with this guy today. And then sure enough, the guy turns around and I lose the, the sound because the mics weren't working. So Francisco thanked me, sent me an email, and I'm like, oh, dude, if you're available, I'm going to go back to your house. Yeah. So I showed up at his house. And by the way, you have the greatest bachelor pad ever, dude. Thank okay. you. Thank you. It's an it's, amazing place. It, okay, look at, okay. This kid lives uh, literally a block from the water. And he's a kid. He's, he's 30. So, okay. 31. 31. Okay. 31. <laughs> but let's tell the story real quick, okay? So you have a Binance account, That's okay? Good. Yes. And uh, the thing that's amazing is you've got, you know, you save some crypto you got ten thousand dollars in there right and you try to withdraw that money and mm -hmm. just a, a chunk of it four grand right four grand in one day in and, one day yes and it still has not happened and that was on the 8th of june you did that that's correct. and you still cannot get the money out i still cannot get the money um i emailed binance this morning i asked them um that it's been five business days since i requested the withdrawal and they basically said that due to the SEC litigation. Let, let's oh. do this one more time because bone hit with this music. Yeah. They'll copyright claim the video with the music. Oh, okay. okay. So, so you, um, you contact Binance. That's correct. And what do they say? They told me that because of the SEC litigation, they don't know when I'll receive the funds and they have no idea when I'll receive the funds. And I was really stressed out this morning. I couldn't, I can do anything. I, I had to go on a two hour run to basically relieve the stress because I had fear that and they then were going to do FTX. Yeah. And then I ran into you. That's correct. So, um, full, so it's, that's the thing. That's a concern is that FTX, they open up. Everybody thinks that they're the greatest thing ever. Right. Everybody's putting all their money in there. And then they shut down overnight. And now here it is. You've got $10,000, again, right. which is a lot of money. And you try to withdraw money. And 
they're not letting you have it at all right they're, now. They're not. With no end in sight right now. With no end in sight. And typically, I trusted Binance because I've had hundreds of thousands of dollars before with them. And I've withdrawn. Um, and it's only taken within two to three business days. And now it's taken over five business days. And it's only $4,000. But radio silence, though. So there's no answer. There's no, uh, you know, and that's the thing about these crypto exchanges, too, is the... Right the lack of a customer service phone number. It's not like you can call and speak to somebody. It's all via email and you finally got them to respond via Twitter, is that right? I got them to respond uh, via their app. There's a customer chat, customer service chat box where you could send them um, questions and a live person will respond. Wow, wow. So guys, I mean, this is serious. When you see like Westpac Bank and now Francisco's got this problem, I mean, it's just a matter of time, guys, until, uh, uh, you're going to see other things shut down, but but what's the right answer for this? Is Binance safe? Is Binance in big trouble? Are they going to get shut down? Their SEC lawsuit, is that going to be the end all to be all? So there's a lot of people we were talking about. There's people that have millions of dollars in Binance right now, and you know they can't get it, and you know that everybody's shut down right now. So yeah. that's crazy times right now, guys. So... You know, thanks for joining me out here. Yeah. I really appreciate this. This is absolutely awesome. But thanks for coming back, too. Because I know. <laughs> I felt so stupid because I'm like, what do I do? Show the, the video without the sound and say this is what he was telling me. But right. uh, when you responded, I thought it was great. So thanks for coming out here. Man. You're welcome. And thanks for telling your story. But be prepared, guys, because I'm telling you, these banks are going to shut us down. You're going to have no access to money. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hate to say this. Thank God it was only 10 grand because you've had a lot more money in there before. Yes. But... What are you going to do? What are people going to do right now when they can't get access to cash? You know, who knows? It's going to be very, very hard. And for all the crypto people out there, make sure you take your crypto out. Don't trust Binance. I would not trust Binance at all. Take your crypto, put it in an external wallet, safeguard it there. And if you have any cash in any exchange, I would recommend that you just put it in your bank. Yeah, absolutely, guys. So from from one crypto person to another guys good luck now there's so much going on in the news it was great to meet francisco and hear his story just a great guy great businessman and uh really in touch with crypto so we exchange information it'll be great to uh, reach out to him in the future and to get his input on everything that's going on but there's a lot more to cover right now uh canadian bell which is a media and telecom company. Think about this. They're going to let go of 1,300 jobs. But here's the crazy thing. They're going to close and shutter six different radio stations. How does a radio station fail? Think about that. Can't sell ads. So nobody's watching that. You know, you can't, you know, you can turn it into talk radio. You didn't have to pay the royalties for music. But no, just going to close them. That would be less expensive. Uh, Royal Mail in uh, the UK, mail service is going to let go of thousands of jobs right now. So you're going to see this happen more and more and more where there's going to be more layoffs right now. Jerome Powell steps forward this week and uh, I was going to talk about this earlier, but uh, the news came out about the bank limiting people's funds. And uh, Jerome Powell, you know, it, it's not so much that he didn't raise interest rates. It's what he said afterwards that was so disturbing. And the first thing with that was he said, hey, listen, we're definitely going to raise interest rates at least a couple more times this year. And so the experts immediately say, OK, that means a quarter of a point each time. He didn't say that. He didn't say how much he was going to raise interest rates. So God knows what it's going to be. But interest rates are going to go up this year. So there's there's just a brief pause right now. But he also said something that makes zero sense. And he said right now that you're going to see the... Uh, that the real estate market has bottom and that prices are actually going up again. And I don't know what planet he's on because, you know, I just met with my foreclosure buddy who's getting busier and busier as weeks go by. And uh, the canary in the coal mine is going to be commercial loans that are going to go bad. That's going to bring everything else down. It's going to bring banks down. It's going to bring problems to people's doorsteps, to say the least. So that's happening right now. Now, the one thing that's crazy with this is Larry Summers, the old uh, Treasury Secretary, steps forward and Larry Summers says, uh, uh, he was Bill Clinton's Treasury Secretary, by the way. Larry Summers sits there and says, 
This is like a Looney Tunes cartoon watching what's happening with the Fed right now. None of this makes sense. None of this is realistic. Uh, none of this is remotely healthy. And it's like Wile E. Coyote going off a cliff. And that's what you have to look forward to. So nothing real. But he also said with the latest Fed announcement this week that it was stupid, ludicrous, made no sense. Because why did they pause? Why don't they just raise interest rates now? What's the point of that? San Francisco is its own worst enemy. It keeps feeling its own burn of uh, just a city in chaos. And uh, there is an ice cream shop owner, Anthony Womack, who owned What's the Scoop is the name of his ice cream shop. The thing that interested me is the kid was only 24 years old. And he owns an ice cream shop. And that was great. But one thing that's fascinating about this was he was robbed not once but twice in the same day. Isn't that terrible? How pathetic is that? How sad is that? Now, here's the worst thing. They broke in after hours and stole the cash register, which, you know, I have people that tell me every time they hear these stories and I run into somebody, they tell me the same thing. Dan, we now leave the cash register open at night. We take everything out of it and let them see through the window that the cash register is empty. So if they want to break in, they're stealing an empty box. So they did that. And then the worst thing was that people broke in again and then used their hands to scoop out ice cream and eat the ice cream with their hands. So because of health code violations, he has to get rid of the ice cream now to the tune of about 20 grand worth of ice cream that was damaged. So isn't that terrible? Absolutely terrible. Now we heard about the mall closing in the last week and uh, you know, Westfield's done, but Cinemark, the movie company, they're finished too. They're going to go and leave San Francisco right now. So it's just a matter of time, guys, until we see more and more places leave San Francisco. Why would anybody be there? Why would you want to visit San Francisco? I mean, talking about a city in chaos, it, it's absolutely nuts. So they're doing nothing. They could care less about tourism. They could care less about the safety of businesses. And uh, it's just a matter of time until we see more and more of this go down right now. Next thing is Instapot. Remember Instapot, that darling that you, everybody had to have an Instapot a few years back? Uh, well, Instapot company, I will never forget walking by a Williams Sonoma at a place called Crystal Court. This is the sister mall to South Coast Plaza. They had a chef there that was teaching people how to use the Instapot. So they were charging top dollar for the Instapot, which was crazy. And in addition to that, you had to pay $90 to take this class by this chef. And I forgot, I forgot who it was, somebody famous, but they were lined up and they were just, you know, about to cordon all of us out that didn't pay for the class. And uh, I just was like, wow, is this big? And guess what? Instapot filed for bankruptcy yesterday. Now the worst part about that is they also own another brand that's even bigger. They own Pyrex right now. And the thing about Pyrex, think about how many Pyrex dishes you have and casserole dishes and bread pans and things like that. Those are the glass ones that you've had for 20 years. And that brand has gone down for the count. So they're in bankruptcy right now and they don't know if they're gonna get out of it or not, if they're gonna spin off Pyrex or what they're gonna do. But again, sign of the times right now that more and more companies are going out of business right now. Next thing is, you know, UPS, the brown trucks, they've gotten so much heat lately because of the bad weather that I did not know that those trucks don't have air conditioning. Here in Southern California, I have never, rarely do you see a UPS driver drive the truck with the door uh, closed. Usually the doors are open. I see the guy strapped in and the doors are closed, but there are 93,000 UPS trucks and they're going to equip all of them with air conditioning. You know what that's going to cost? It's going to be a fortune to do that. And it's to make uh, drivers more safe right now. So it'll be interesting to see if they pull that off or not. But I had no idea there were 93,000 individual trucks that could be affected by this, those big brown trucks. And the other thing is, um, the thing that's fascinating about a UPS truck is everybody thinks they're brown all over. The tops are clear, so they let light in, so they don't need interior lights during the day to unload packages. So there's that. So one of the things that's fascinating is uh, Amazon has new electric trucks and uh, to, for deliveries, they don't have backup lights. How crazy is that? So these guys back up with their 
hazards on so they don't run into anybody and kill anybody. And there's some famous TikToks that are out there where they're showing that and filming that and showing people what it's like as these people are walking through, uh, you know, delivery and neighbors are coming out and saying, okay, you can back up now. There's nobody there. Someone's going to get hurt with those trucks. People keep writing me about the VPN company. The VPN company that I use is Private Internet Access. I will leave the link below for you, but the single most important thing that you can have with your computer, with anybody browsing your on your iPads, your personal devices, your cell phone, is a VPN. Uh, we worked out a deal to where you get 82% off uh, when you sign up for Private Internet Access. It's a must-have in your house. Plus, I also worked a deal out that all of your devices are covered for one purchase. It's the deal of the year, guys. Look at that. Last few things in this video is uh, the Walt Disney house, the original house that he had when he started Disneyland, uh, the Disney productions that he would watch his dailies in in Los Feliz. It's uh, over an acre and uh, it's renting for $40,000 a month. 40 grand, stories below. 40 grand a month. So you can rent the Walt Disney house for 40 G's a month, guys. See, and again, you know that they're getting that just because it's the Walt Disney house. It's not that it's worth $40,000 a month in Los Feliz, that's me. So final, final story is, have you ever done work for a company and thought, well, they really didn't appreciate me? Well, one guy worked as a freelancer for a video production company and did templates and different things for this company and had a six month agreement as a uh, independent contractor. At the end of his six months, he made a presentation to say, look at all the work I've done, look at the, uh, the output, everything I've, contributed to the company and I want more money and I want a full-time position and they said no you weren't worth it um, you know called him incompetent didn't do his job wasn't good so he was upset leaves the company but three years later he's on his Google Drive and he notices a folder that he made for the company was still being accessed by the old company three years later but he was paying for the Google Drive and he was furious over this because remember he's incompetent and all the templates, everything was being used by 18 different employees at the company. So what did he do? Oh yeah, I know. Deleted everything. So it's mine, bye. So of course the company's furious and he's like, wait a second, you guys got rid of me. So this brings up legal ownership issues of who owns it. You know, I have been fired from jobs and deals and things like that in the past. And I will never forget an employment lawyer telling me, give them everything back every single thing that you have of theirs. Don't hold anything back. Don't be forgetful. Don't do anything. Give it all back to them. You have to give it back. And uh, that way they can never say that you stole anything or you took anything or you misled us or anything. But uh, sometimes that's a very bitter pill to swallow, to say the least. So sorry for the late video today. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was nice running to Francisco. I don't know what it is today, but there's been like four people I've run into out here on the beach that uh, watch the channel. So I appreciate everybody. And uh, don't forget to like the video, hit the subscribe button. We'll be back on the regular schedule tomorrow. And uh, onward and upward, guys. I will see you guys very soon. And thank you one and all. Appreciate everything.